prescription drug abuse is a growing problem in this country, and a big part of that problem is rogue pharmacies distributing millions of pills. It's the fastest growing drug problem in the United States, prescription drugs. This week, we're going in-depth on Medication Nation. Americans have been led to believe by doctors, advertisers, the pharmaceutical industry, that there's a pill to cure just about everything. Well, CNN Networks looks into the politics as well as the pills. So you go to one doctor for a problem, you get a prescription. You go to another doctor for something else, you get another medication. Well, that is what some experts call prescription multiplication. Senior medical correspondent Elizabeth Cohen has the story of one woman who learned about the dangers firsthand. This is how you lose your life. For me to see this, you know, it just brings back the 10 years of suffering. What went wrong? Alessandra Rain says too many doctors, too much medicine. It started when Rain had trouble sleeping. Her family doctor prescribed sleeping pills. A few weeks later, she developed bronchitis, so a pulmonologist put her on antibiotics. Then she had a rapid heartbeat. A cardiologist gave her medicine for that. And it didn't end there. Depression soon followed. A psychiatrist prescribed antidepressants. And on it continued until eventually Rain says she was seeing six different physicians taking 12 different types of medications, each month taking hundreds of pills, spending more than $900 on prescriptions. But you just take them without thinking. You know, they just become part of your day. According to the Kaiser Family Foundation, Americans spent more than $234 billion on prescription drugs in 2008, nearly six times more than in the early 1990s. The average American fills 12 prescriptions a year. Back now at 740 with Pill Nation and an in-depth look at all of the medicines that Americans take. All right, more than 4 billion prescriptions were written in 2011. That is the most ever. Everything from sleeping pills to drugs for anxiety and depression, you name it. NBC's Tom Costello is in Washington with more on this. Good morning, Tom. Hi, Hoda. While modern medicines help us cut cholesterol, high blood pressure, heart disease, they've allowed us to manage pain and live with chronic illnesses, the question medical ethicists are asking is whether we're all taking entirely too many pills for our own good. As I went down in the Up in the mountains of Appalachia, 12-year-old Courtney, her sister 11-year-old Mary, tell us a secret about their mom. I'll be honest. Our mommy used to be hooked on drugs, and we did not like it one bit.
Now, an ABC4 News exclusive. When you think of drug rehab, you probably think of people recovering from addictions to cocaine, heroin, even Oxycontin. But the number of people seeking help for another prescription drug is exploding. And a lot of them are just kids who are battling a life-threatening addiction to Ritalin. It was pain like she had never known before. Ten years ago, Kathy Nicholas Verasso slipped on black ice, breaking her neck and causing permanent nerve damage. I would sit in the ball in the bottom of the shower and cry because I didn't want to cry in front of everybody. It was only when doctors prescribed methadone, a painkiller often used in addiction therapy, that she found relief. Without it, she says, she might have given up. I wouldn't be alive. It, I was at the point where... I was seriously considering suicide just because I couldn't take the pain anymore. Thanks to the methadone, she has her life back. Nationwide, Americans are taking more prescription meds than ever before. More than 15 million Americans take painkillers, hydrocodone, oxycodone, and tramadol among the most prescribed. Five million take a sleeping aid, while a staggering 18 million take antidepressants. The risks? Emily knows them all too well. Oh, I've lost everything and like something that started with just a prescription has led me into places that I never ever ever thought that I would go. Emily was a high school cheerleader accepted to Penn State when she underwent chest surgery to remove a cancerous mass. She was already taking anti-anxiety meds. Soon she was dependent on then addicted to the painkillers. It makes me more comfortable in my own skin like I'm invincible. The government estimates 2.1 million Americans are addicted to prescription meds. ERs treat more than a million prescription ODs each year. The most common misused drugs, anti-anxiety, sleeping pills, pain relievers, and antidepressant. Mm -hmm. And these drugs become so addictive. They talked about the anti-anxiety meds and those kind of things. What's the danger? You start on one of those because you need it, and then suddenly right. you can't live without it. Exactly. I mean, some of these are actually biochemically addictive. So you do start with something, say a benzodiazepine for anxiety, and you do de develop a tolerance. And then you need more and more of the same medication to have the same effect. And then soon you have a problem. And that's, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. We see that with pain medications. There's some of the most abused medications, mm -hmm. anxiety medications. And then there's sleep aids and yes. antidepressants yeah. that people would benefit from another kind of treatment, to be perfectly honest. Like be, what? psychotherapy, uh -huh. sleep hygiene, education, so that they have ongoing coping skills and don't relapse. And that's really a better treatment for them, but we don't do it. Why? We because want it's the not quick, as fast. Yeah, we want the quick fix. Exactly. All right, Gail Saltz, thanks so much. Thanks for being here. People in pain are miserable. Their life um, is full of pain. They can't move. And suddenly they have a medicine, an opioid, a drug and they take it and they get a massive release of dopamine in their brain. Dopamine is a, is a drug within the brain that motivates people, motivates people positively. It's the same kinds of things that you see for fast food. It's the kind of things that you see in runners who say, I have to run because they get that runner's high. It's a massive release of dopamine. Well, we can do that with medicines. By far the largest population of patients that we see with chronic pain have nothing to do with addiction. What we're talking about is some of the side effects associated with the medications used to treat chronic pain. Because if you had to take narcotics, Oxycontin, methadone, morphine every day, you're going to find out that while you may get a rush of dopamine, it may be short-lived. In fact, you may notice that the dose has to go up to get the same rush, and pretty soon you may be very dependent uh, on that drug. We give patients opioids as a primary therapy for chronic pain. Very well uh, understood standard of care, but I will tell you that when you start taking that medicine every day, your body becomes dependent on that medicine so that if you didn't take it one day, you'd have withdrawals. That doesn't make you an addict, that makes you physically dependent. It's very, very different.
We also do seem to be a country that turns to drugs for solutions more than many other industrialized wealthy countries do. At Brigham and Women's Hospital, Dr. Jerry Aborn says something changed in the 1990s when it became legal for drug makers to advertise. And that's created a sense on the part of many patients that, oh, I saw that ad on television, I think I should be on that medicine. Demand for drugs skyrocketed, but the drug industry says the ads only inform consumers of the help that's available to them. GenRx is a term that's used to describe the addiction to prescription medications that we see in teenagers and young adults. You've heard the term Generation X to describe that generation, yeah. but now we use that term because there's so many people that are getting addicted to prescription medications, and a lot of the times they're not their prescriptions. So they're getting prescriptions illegally on the internet. Another phenomena that we've seen and experienced is teenagers using debit cards to purchase these drugs online and then have them shipped to them, FedEx or UPS.